right? Oh, no, I left it in the hotel room. Uh, God's demon. It's not too bad. It's interesting. It's a, it's a t take on uh, the demons down in hell and how they're getting by since the, since the fall. It's interesting. It's, it's pretty interesting. D a little bit. I'm a sci-fi fantasy nerd, but it's a, a little bit different, darker fantasy than I, than I normally read, I think. No. It's it's basically it's the only time I have to read. I don't get any chance to read at home, so only only chance to get. It. I bring like three four books me every time I go uh, I go somewhere for work. So it's a, this is my time. So I'm like, oh, I can read my books finally. Oh yeah, for sure. This is the last four fights of my career. Uh, I give it all I got and give it the best I got, you know, uh, lay it all out there. And then after I'm done, then it's going to be my wife's turn. It's going to be her turn to give her chance to live her dreams, go be a world champion, you know. I'll uh, go pick up the kids from school, go drop them off, get in line. That school pickup line, uh, that's a killer, that school pickup lines. <laughs> and then uh, take them to chess practice and soccer practice and all that stuff. And I'll be doing all that stuff. Making meals and yeah. Yeah, making that decision. Does that change anything like with you? Like is that freeing in a way where you know I've got four fights left and you know what you like to have? I actually I think for me it's the exact opposite. It pushed that, that much more pressure. Like, oh, only four left. For the rest of my life, I got four left. That's it. And then after this one and after the rest of my life I got three left and then two left and then last one, you know. So actually I think it kind of adds a little bit more pressure. But I mean for me personally, everything I do, I always add more pressure to myself to, you know, get the best out of myself. What do you make of Peter as an opponent? I think Peter's tough. I think he's a true veteran of the sport, been around for a little while. Um, I think he has a good long straight right. He believes in his straight right. He has a decent switch kick. He doesn't throw it against southpaws too much. Uh, I think he's, you know, a tough guy. It should be a, a good, fun fight. Um, you know, he's going to try and beat me up, and I'm going to try and beat him up. Oh, I, I definitely want to give the Irish fans a, a better show. The last performance against Miles Jury, I was, uh, I felt after the fight a little bit lackluster. I feel like it wasn't my best performance. I just want to give a better performance. I want to have a better performance for the Irish fans. I think uh, an opponent like Peter Queeley is going to bring that best performance out of me. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm. I, like I said, how much I enjoyed Ireland last time. I was like, oh, man, how do I get a chance to go out to Ireland again? Like, that's the place I, I'd want to bring my family out. So I'm actually bringing out the whole family this time, my wife, my four kids. And we're going we're gonna to explore Dublin and, and explore, explore all Ireland, go see some castles and uh, uh, just, you know, go sightsee a little bit. Yeah, uh, probably. I'm sure he knows a few good places. Yeah, probably. I think the Irish fans, uh, the last time I heard it, were amazing. It was a great uh, experience, great vibe, great energy from the, from the crowd. Uh, anytime, you, as um, I like to think of some more as you know, uh, athletes, as, as competitors, but at the same time, I, I am realistic in that we're also entertainers as well. Uh, and as an entertainer, being in front of that kind of a crowd, that kind of energy, man, that's, uh, that's electrifying. I I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, I know coming off a loss is not a good feeling. And you are definitely, I am definitely way more uh, jacked up coming off a loss, uh, trying to get it back in that W column. I, I'm assuming he's going to be the same way. Come back to the talk about the fight against Miles Jury last night. You said it to us in the scrum after that fight that he wanted to come back. He wanted to make a point of it to do it, and, you know, put on a show again. And then the, what, the three years since that, you haven't forgotten that. You said it on Instagram again the other day. I was all of it. It's, it's hard to just put your finger on one thing, 
But overall, the entire experience in Dublin has been awesome. You know, I, I generally have a good experience everywhere I go. I'm not too much of a tough guy or, you know, I'm not too antagonistic at all or anything like that. But, you know, I generally have a good experience. But Dublin, I, the last time I was here, it was like above and beyond. Like, oh, man, this is a really cool place. The people are really friendly. They're real nice, uh, respectful. The crowd was amazing. The... The uh, Sweet Caroline, the whole place singing Sweet Caroline, it was awesome. Like I was, I was like, man, this is super cool. Like this is awesome. This is a, a good vibe. It was, it's um, cool to see a crowd that excited, that pumped up for a fight, and not necessarily be entirely like a uh, negative, entirely just yelling. Oh, you, you know, uh, some crowd, some fans can can be have that sort of excitement, that kind of vibe, but then be very negative with it. To see a crowd just be excited and like cheering for their guys and just just uh, in a positive way, I, I I think that is what I most connect with. Like the Irish fans were very positive in their cheering and not necessarily negative in their cheering. And we'll see how it goes this time. Uh, I'm okay with my kids coming to my fight. I'll let my wife make that decision. Sometimes she brings the kids to the fight. Sometimes she doesn't want to bring the kids to the fight. She won't bring them for whatever reason is. Um, but, but for me, I think it's it's fine. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I, I think you have to take a good look at what kind of fighter you are, too. Uh, you uh, live live by the sword, die by the sword type of fighter? Do you hit all your wins are by knockout? All your losses are by knockout? Uh, maybe you might not want to bring your kids to your fight then. Like, you know, if you're... If you're uh, if you're a 500 fighter and all your wins over knockout, all your losses by knockout, like man, that's you want you you want your kids to, to be there to witness that. Uh, my fights that tend to not be that way, um, so yeah, I'm I'm okay with bringing my kids to, to my fights. Uh, uh, I want to show my kids the um, the hard work that it takes. I want my kids to see that all this hard work. This is the reason why we work. I work so hard. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't, I don't think it's bad, bad, but you have to be aware of you know your fighting style and yada 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 where you're at the crowd atmosphere taking your kids to a fight in vegas with the vegas fans as crazy and drunk as they get and as like negative of fans as they get that might not be a good idea like you know that you're gonna hear some stuff that you probably don't want your depending on how young they are you might not want your kids hearing that kind of stuff Uh, man, this is the first time I got the question. I was I uh, couldn't wait to get this question. I love Jose. He is the man. He is an absolute legend. Uh, I'd say a buddy of mine. You know, coming up from the WC, coming to the UFC, us both having success. Uh, man, I think he's absolute. He's a man. He he's one of the all time greats. Uh, and for him to walk away on his terms, how he wants to, I, I love that. Um, I just all all the res most respect to to Jose Aldo. Uh, to his career, to what he's done, to how he's done it. He's done it his way. I'm a big fan of that. He was never like a super big talker, never like a bragger, never a Billy, you know, Billy badass, Terry Toughness type of individual. But he's somebody who enjoyed himself, liked to have fun, jumped outside the cage and enjoyed the the crowd reaction. It didn't matter where he was. In Sacramento, I still jump outside the crowd cage. You, you, the fans are still going to love me, you know? So I, 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 loved, uh, I loved everything Jose was about. I, I think he was a... Uh, you know, a great champion, represented the sport very well. Uh, I think he was just overall good guy, you know, so uh, sad to see him go. Uh, but, you know, all, all the best to him in his uh, next life's endeavors. Oh, I didn't know that. Obviously, by the time this contract finishes, you will have fought more times in Bellator than the UFC. How nice. do you want your legacy in Bellator to be compared to that incredible run you had in the UFC? Uh huh. I don't know. I don't think I necessarily would. You have to have it separated. I mean, up to you guys. You guys are the journalists. You guys are the pundits who uh, put everything to scope and put things in scale and give great big words to this stuff, you know? So I'll let you guys do your job. But just right. for you, like with the last uh, four, three, four fights in your comic book, ideally, you're drawing your comic book end of this. Yep. Where do you want this to go? Uh, after I beat up Peter Queeley, get my hand raised and put a stop to Peter Queeley, I'm going to get a title shot next. And I'm either going to beat up. Uh, Pitbull, 
uh, I'd love to do it in a soccer stadium in Brazil, or I'll beat up a Russian. Let's do that in a soccer stadium in, in Russia. No problem, you know. Um, but either way, I'm going to end this last four fights with a belt or lightweight belt around my waist. And then I'll let you guys do your job and talk about this and talk about that and how boring I was or how cool I was or how many exciting fights I had or whatever the case may be. As a fighter, we can't control that. I can't control, like, Jose Aldo. I, he can't control. I can't control what you guys say afterwards. Only thing I can control is how hard I work, what I do out into the, uh, out there in the in the octagon, in the cage. That's what I can't control. That's what I'm worried about. Not necessarily always worried about, like, oh, what are they going to say about your legacy and, and how are they going to do this and how are they do that. Man, I can't control that. You guys can say whatever the heck you want to say. People say this about, you know, uh, Derek Jeter. People say this about, you know, um, whoever, Isaiah Thomas and the kind of career he had, the man he was, yada, yada. Wayne Rooney, oh, what kind of man Wayne Rooney was and yada, yada, kind of player he was. Eh, you guys can write about it for years and years and years and, and you know, break apart his, his career. For me, for the, for the athletes, we just go do, do our best. That's all, all we're really concerned about. If you were to win the, let's say, the, the fight in your next one, uh, a man who's recently gone into free agency who's also said he wants the world title is Nate Diaz. Is that someone who you'd be interested in trying to get over to the Bellator cage to, to defend your title against? Um, sure. I, <laughs> I mean, if he comes over, like, cool, awesome. I wouldn't say... Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I want to say I'm, I'm, I want that fight or I'm itching for that fight or nothing like that. But if uh, Bellator is able to sign Nate Diaz, he's going to be getting paid. Good for him, man. Good for him. Uh, but, you know, uh, sure, I, I would enjoy fighting Nate Diaz again. Uh, we fought once before. It was an enjoyable fight for me. And we can do it again, no, no problem. Um, but, you know. He'll 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 be just fine. He he he's in, he has made a ton of money in his career. He's in his next contract, he's make a, a ton more money. So you know, hats off to him. And finally, most important question: Have you been watching any of the Marvel series, and what do you think of them? Uh, again, just with the kids, I don't get to watch as many of the Marvel series as I would like to. Um, we we try to keep the the violence on our TV down a little bit, so the kids don't get they start watching a little bit of. Uh, Power Rangers, we had we to cut the Power Rangers back on our kids. They start watching Power Rangers and all of a sudden they're flying off the couch, jump kicking each other in the head. Like, what are you doing? Stop that. You can't. Uh, so we try, we try to cut that, that down on our TV as much as possible. Um, we got Coco Melon and, and Choo Choo on our TV to keep them nice and calm and not beat each other up enough as, as it is. So uh, I don't get a whole lot of chance to, to watch those shows right now. Appreciate that. Thanks. That's a, uh, yeah, I've seen you fight a couple of times down in Budapest of all places and in the free arena, of course. And you mentioned about your type of fight, so it feels to me, you know, that you kind of get into a rhythm. And it seems almost hypnotic at times, almost fanatic. So would, would this be a kind of a description you'd recognize? And, and how do you see that kind of style clashing with uh, Peter on Friday? I definitely think most fighters have their, have their own certain style of fighting. You have to be good enough to either implement your style and still your will during the fight but also at the same time you have to be good enough to adapt and change and not just like oh i'm gonna hammer in this you know circle into this square peg you have to be able to adapt and and, and change and, and grow during the course of the fight uh so i say i definitely have my style and, and, and how i like to to throw down but i like to also be uh good enough to you know, if the fight stays standing, to stay standing. If the fight goes to the ground, it goes to the ground. If the fight is all, you know, a pure jujitsu match, and let's do, you know, let's play jujitsu, no problem. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say uh, my style is, you know, unique, different. People can, I can definitely tell. Uh, just if you were have mass on us or something like that, they would, I think they could tell, you know, my style of fighting, see me just the way I move and, and what the moves I use and whatnot. They could probably tell, uh, you know, oh, that's, uh, that looks like Ben Sanderson over there just by how he moves and the type of fight this is. Yeah, and uh, just lastly for me, uh, obviously it's in the free arena, and at the end of the fight, you actually, instead of exiting the cage, you went back out to the front of the cage steps and you kind of stood in with the crowd. Was that kind of, presumably you don't do that every time, was that something special in Ireland or was it planned or did you feel uh, the time here? Or? No, I, I, I tend to give a lot of respect to the crowd. Um, you know, people tune in from around the world and you know, watching on TV and then online and streaming it and whatnot. But uh, I, I always trying to go out of my way a little bit to respect the guys who come out and watch the event live. I love that. That's awesome. Like uh, maybe the the entertainer part of me, which I, you know, like, again, I like to say that we're more competitors, more athletes. Um, but I still like to give a lot of respect to the guys who come out, 
pay their hard-earned money, come out and uh, enjoy the fights live. So I want to give all, all my respect to the people who come out uh, and, and watch in the arena, sit their butts in, in the stands. I love that. That's awesome.